What did our driver do wrong? On the road, you have a lot to keep track of. Your speed, your mirrors, your gauges, your trailer. You also need to keep track of the position of other drivers. But being aware of what's going on around your rig isn't the same as trying to control it. When drivers try to force things to happen, they usually do. And those things are almost never good. Almost never what was intended. When a large commercial motor vehicle, or CMV, rear ends a passenger vehicle, the results can be catastrophic. You may know or may have met fellow drivers who have struck a car from behind. They hardly ever say, I rear-ended someone. They usually say, I ran over someone. Rear-end collisions are the most expensive and often the most devastating type of accident for CMV drivers. Every year, more than 72,000 trucks are involved in rear-end crashes, which are by far the most common type of traffic accident. Rear-end collisions also account for more than 18% of all truck crashes. And not surprisingly, almost all of them could have been avoided because most of them were caused by driver error. As you know, the odds are stacked against the leading vehicle in a rear-end collision, while the driver who rear-ended another motorist is almost always at fault. The risks of being in a rear-end collision range from getting a ticket to getting seriously injured or losing your CDL to losing your life. One of the biggest problems is the fact that uh, you can't foresee what other people are going to do. You can't necessarily drive their vehicles, but you have to think and be ready for anything that happens. You become complacent in, in how you uh, approach your uh, safety, and you start to follow too close. You don't give yourself enough uh, a space cushion in your driving, and uh, you can become distracted and inattentive. So, what is a typical rear-end collision? Driver A is stopped or going slower than driver B. Or driver A makes an unexpected move in front of driver B. In either case, driver B doesn't or can't stop in time. Passing can also be a red flag, usually because a driver gets too close before pulling out to pass or fails to leave room for a passing vehicle to get safely back in line. Now that we've looked at some of the common causes of rear-end collisions, let's look at some strategies you can use to prevent them from happening. It begins with being alert and aware. If you know what's going on ahead, to the sides, and behind you, you can take the precautions necessary to avoid trouble. Another key is to watch out for what other drivers are doing. Anticipate that they will suddenly slow down or stop. Expect the worst. Performing a proper visual search is probably one of the first things you learned in driver training. It seems like every time I'm on the road, I see drivers allowing what seems like only one or two seconds of stopping distance. Simple fact is, a following distance of two seconds just won't cut it. The rule of thumb for safe following distance under ideal conditions is one second for every 10 feet of your vehicle at speeds below 40 miles per hour. For speeds over 40, you need to add even more cushion, typically one additional second. So if you're traveling 65 with a 60-foot rig, your following distance should be at least seven seconds. Sometimes conditions can change so quickly that you simply can't stop in time to avoid an emergency. Generally, evasive maneuvers are safer than trying to stop. If a lane is available, a quick lane change is the best route. If that's impossible, the shoulder is your next best option. You should always leave yourself an out and be prepared to use it. The biggest factor is speed, inattentiveness, 
and uh, you know, not proper following distances. If you can observe those three things uh, properly, then you should keep yourself out of that equation. You should keep yourself out of danger in terms of rear end collision. Rear end collisions are far too common and the results are far too terrifying. If you don't do everything in your power to prevent one, sooner or later, it will happen to you. I bet you've probably seen the results of some pretty awful rear end wrecks over the years. Defensive driving not only helps you avoid them and the downtime and lost income that can follow a serious crash, it can also help protect you and others from serious injury.